This is Bart Polson, and this video is a walkthrough for the first exercise in Learn Python the Hard Way by Zed Shaw. And what you need to do is you first need to go to his website at learnpythonthehardway.org and then click on Read the Free HTML Online. What we're going to do when that opens is we're going to this one right here, Exercise 1, A Good First Program. I'm going to click that open. Now, hopefully you did the previous stuff already and you've installed, um, if you have Windows, you've installed Python 2.7, whatever, and you've installed Notepad++. If you have a Mac, you already have Python installed and you would have installed Text Wrangler. This is a text editor for actually writing the programs. If you have Linux, you probably know what to do anyhow, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, what we're going to do right here is we're going to start by writing a program. Now, the tricky thing here is, We've got two separate things that we're coordinating. We're going to use a text editor, which is just like, it's like a very simple word processor, except if we tell it it's a Python file, it treats it in a special way. Um, we're going to use a text editor and we're going to write our program in there, but that's not where we run the program. The place where you press play is in the terminal. And so we're gonna show how to bounce back and forth between the two of those. So the first thing that Zed wants us to do is to create a file named ex1.py. Now I'm gonna open up my text editor, which is text wrangler. And you see I have, um, I have an empty document. I haven't saved it as anything. Let me start by saving it. Actually, uh, yeah. Now you'll notice that um, probably for you, when it opens up, it probably offers to save it as a text file. That's normal, and that's a very flexible thing, and Python can read that. But what you want to do is you want to specifically tell Text Wrangler it's a .py for Python file, and it will it will highlight the syntax and colors, and also it will know uh, when you call it in terminal, it will know how to read it that way. So let's do this. What we're going to do is I'm going to change the ending here to .py, which means it's a Python file. And I'm going to take this title here and I'm going to change it to x01. By the way, Z just calls it ex1. I'm adding the 01 um, because we're going to have 50 something exercises. And if you want them to sort correctly, there are certain operating systems where you got to have the leading zero. So I'm throwing that in to make things a little easier. Then I'm going to save them in a folder. It's in, here's my uh, home drive, or my home folder, my home directory is BART. In the last exercise, I created a directory called LPTHW for Learn Python the Hard Way. I'm going to save it in there. And in fact, if we come and look in the finder, yeah, there it is. And you'll see it's got a different icon. Let me see if I can make that a little bigger. It doesn't show up that way. Never mind. It's got a different icon, and that's because it's a Python file. And we're going to start putting some text in here. Now, I typed it all beforehand, and I deleted it one line at a time. If I'm lucky, I'll be able to do the undo. If not, I'll just type it over again. The first thing is to type this line, print hello world. Okay, please be, understand, the lines are case sensitive. You have to use uppercase and lowercase the exact same way that Zed uses it. So I type the word print, that's a command in Python. I type that in lowercase and I put a space and then I use double quotes and I put the, the uh, phrase hello world. That's the thing that I want it to print. And that's not going to print it on your printer. What that means actually is show it on the screen. And that's what's going to happen when we run the program. The next line is to print hello again. So it's just a repeat except it's a different line. Um, by the way, you'll notice if you've done any other programming or so if, you know a lot of times you have to end your commands with a semicolon or a period or something. You don't do that in, in Python. You just hit return and go to the next line, and it knows you're going to the next line. And that's something important to remember. So here we have print, and then in quotes, hello world, and then the second line, print, hello again. And again, lowercase print, and the thing I want it to show on the screen is in quotes. By the way, if you did this in Word or something, it would put in curly quotes, you know, the angled ones, which are much better for top for typography, but they'll totally screw up the programming. That's one of the reasons you do this in a regular text editor, because it's going to use the quote, the straight quotes or dumb quotes. 
and the program will be able to read them the right way. Okay, my third line, print, I like typing this. And my fourth line, this is fun. And my fifth line, yay printing. Now the sixth line is a little different. The reason this one is different is because I have a I have apostrophes within the quotes. And that's okay. The important thing though is if I'm gonna have an apostrophe, you see I got an apostrophe right here and and I'd and and not here is within single quotes. That's fine as long as I enclose the entire phrase in double quotes and I do not have any double quotes that appear inside. Because if I do, then Python will think I'm done with the command and we'll have a problem. So remember, if you start with double quotes, you gotta finish with single quotes and have not, it's finish with double quotes and have nothing, no double quotes in between. Single quotes are okay. Similarly, the last line that Zed shows us is, if you wanna have double quotes inside your line, one way to do it is to put the entire quote in single quotes. And that works too. All the other ones we've done are in double quotes. This last one's in single quotes. That's fine as long as you do the same thing at the beginning, at the end, and don't have it appearing in the middle. So this time we mark off the word in the middle with double quotes. Now, just so you know, there is another way to deal with it. If you have to put single quotes or double quotes in the middle and you don't want it to think that you are ending a command, you can do what's called escaping a character. Zed's gonna show it to us later. That's where you use a backslash right before the character. And it tells Python, don't read this as a quote, read it just as a sort of a symbol. Anyhow, that is our entire program right there. And what I'm gonna do right now is everything's there. I'm gonna save the file now. Okay, so the file is saved. And let me, um, let me do something. I'm gonna push this one up to the, whoops, push this one up to the top, this one down to the bottom. And here, you look, you can even do a quick view in Mac and you can see those are the contents of the file that I've saved. What I'm gonna do now is over here, this is where I wrote it, but I've saved it, it's in its saved condition. Now I'm gonna to go to the terminal and I'm going to run the program. So you see, I wrote it in one program in Text Wrangler or Notepad++ if you're on Windows. That's where I wrote it and I saved it in a folder on my computer and I'm going to run it by going over to the terminal. And if you're not familiar with the terminal, make sure you go to the appendix of Learn Python the Hard Way and go through the command line crash course. And I got a whole series of videos for that one too in, a, in another playlist. Now, the first thing I wanna do is I actually wanna get into the folder where the file is. The file is in LPTHW. Let me make that a little clearer here. There it is. But right now, you see if I do PWD for print working directory, I'm in BART, that's the one above it. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do CD for change directory, LPTHW, there we go. Now I'm in the right directory. The BP just means my computer, and then we have a, a colon, and then it tells me the active directory. And this whole thing right here is just the prompt. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna write in small letters Python. Now, I'm not gonna hit return now, because if I did hit return now, I would launch Python. In fact, let me show you. And now I have a different prompt, and my commands aren't gonna work if I do it there. I'm gonna do control Z so I can exit. So I'm back to where I was. I'm gonna do clear to get rid of some of that stuff. So I'm going to type Python, and that tells the uh, command line to read the next thing that I enter as a Python file. Then I'm going to tell it the name of the program. And remember, capitalization matters. And I'm going to do .py, and then I hit return. And check it out. There's the stuff that I wrote in the program. And um, that's all you... That's yeah, that's all you need to do. So I wrote the text in Text Wrangler, saving it as a .py file and put it in a folder where I knew where it was. Then in the terminal, I changed my directory to go to that same folder. Then I typed the word Python in lowercase. Then I had a space. Then I put the name of the file that I saved with the stuff I wrote. And that ran it right here in the terminal window. Anyhow, that... I believe is the end of a, um, oh no, that is not the end. There's one more thing here. Let me just mention this thing, a pound sign. Now, uh, Zed is calling it an octothorpe, which is a correct name for it because 
Um, there are geographical differences on whether you call it a pound sign or a hashtag or a mesh or, or whatever. But there's an interesting thing that an octothorpe does. Let me come over here and put an octothorpe, or I, again, I just call it a pound sign. Let me put it in front of those two lines and save the file. So now you see, I've got over here. You can see that I've it, it's saved now. And let me run this command again. I'm just gonna hit the up arrow to, and I'm gonna run the exact same command, but you'll see the output's gonna be a little different. It's shorter this time. It did not print these two top lines. And the reason is the pound sign removes those two from the program. And it's, it's called commenting something out because that's also how you can make comments. And it means don't run this line of code. And so I've removed them. And that actually can be a really great way to try variations on code, make two versions of a line and then comment them out one at a time and try them. That can be a great way to do it. But that's also a way to avoid printing something if you don't want it. Anyhow, that's it for exercise one. Hope that worked and I'll see you in a minute for exercise two.